Hey, he's so dead that scares some people to death. That's good, though. That's good, folks. All right. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 Peter chapter number 1, please. 1 Peter chapter number 1. And verse 1. I love the Apostle Peter and his writing. Love it. I love it. Amen. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, the stranger scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's a powerful thing right there. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, Though it be tried with fire, might be found to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Note verse 8 carefully. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Father, bless this holy word now, Lord. Just give me the unction to preach it, Father. That's what you call me to do. That's what I am. And bless it as it goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. This is something that's a powerful statement. I said to you before, the greatest thing you'll ever find in this world is true love. A lot of people look, search for it all their life and still never find it. They go through marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage. And they never come down, they never find true love. Children feel unwanted and rejected and that's bad today. Children are out here sleeping on the streets, running away from home, being, uh, be, uh, joining up with gangs, falling for drugs. And some of these young women go out and sell themselves into prostitution when, they ha when they're addicted to drugs. And most of it is because they never knew what real love was. Love is a powerful thing, folks. I know you think it's weakness, but it's not weakness. It's a great thing. You love Him because He loved you. Here's what the Lord said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. God will not make you love him. But the more you love him is an indication of your character. It shows what you're made out of. You want to know what you're made out of? Find out your relationship with God. For it will always be based on truth. You can flim flam people, but you will not flim flam God. Psalm 91, verse 14. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect, fear casteth, perf perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth, uh, it's not made perfect in love. If anything characterizes the current situation in the world, it is an abundance of fear. People are apprehensive. They're on edge. They don't know what's going to happen next. This is a time of uncertainty. Would you agree with me this morning? And because of uncertainty, people are fearful. Do you realize the suicide rate is skyrocketing? You realize that the, that homes now, a divorce rate is skyrocketing? Do you realize that all of these social ills are a product of the manifest spirit of this age? Uncertainty. Anytime you put people in a situation of uncertainty, you can control them. And that's exactly where people are today. They are where they can be controlled. Why? Because they want to go back to peace and comfort and safety. And that's not there yet. So they're looking to their government to give them an element of peace, security, safety. And it's not coming. So why do I love Him? I love Him because He's gracious. 
The Bible said in Exodus 33 verse 17, The Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also, that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Amen. I'm so glad God knows my name. I know my, He knows my name and I know His name. What's God's name, preacher? Jesus. That's the name of God. Exodus 34 verse 4 says, And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. This is L-O, capital Jehovah, L-O-R-D. He proclaimed that name. It's called the ineffable name of God, the Tetragrammaton. And he gave it to Moses. He said, this is my name. In verse number 6, And the Lord passed by before him, proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Have you met that God today? Do you know the one I'm talking about? You don't listen. Let me tell you something. If you think you deserve something from God, you don't know what grace is. If you think you have earned something from God, you have no idea what grace is. Grace is laying yourself prostrate before God and saying, Lord, I deserve nothing from Thee, but I cry out to Thee because of who You are. Amen. Nothing will stir the soul of God more than somebody that relies on God's character. Thou the Lord, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? Abraham said, can this happen in Sodom? Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? He will. How many believe he'll do right? He will. I love him because he's faithful. Isaiah 49 verse 7 says, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and His Holy One, to Him whom man despiseth, to Him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and He shall choose thee. What does that mean, Holy One of Israel? Preach it means that it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that He has no part, no being whatsoever with the gods of Moab or the gods of Ammon or the gods of the Philistines or the Phoenicians. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Just the other day, a mob gathered into a, into a restaurant and they looked into the face of a woman sitting at a table and said, Are you a Christian? And they said it the way I just said it. They screamed into her face. Are you a Christian? They said to her. And we live in a time when everybody worries about being offended. You're afraid if you say something, you offend somebody. It didn't bother them. They screamed into her face, Are you a Christian with venom? And that, of course, uh, was only taking a break from the vile, uh, uh, vile talk that comes out of their mouth. And then the other day, it wasn't too long ago, that a mob, the same mob, gathered together and they piled a heap of Bibles up and they lit them and they burned Bibles. They burned the Word of God. Listen, my dear friend, you have to be dumb, 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 dumb not to get the message. Are you getting the message? Are you getting the message? Are you hearing what's going on? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You got eyes to see, look. And this bunch of politicians today are telling you this. Don't believe those lying eyes. You'd better believe them. We're living in dangerous times. Something is happening right before your eyes. Hard to take a hold of it sometimes because it is so far into everything that you know. I'm not saying everybody marching in the street is anti-Christ and against Christians. No, I'm not saying everybody that marches in the street wants to burn Bibles. That's not at all what I'm saying. A lot of the people marching in the streets have a legitimate reason. They have a grievance. They want to get out and, and protest. That's fine. No problem with that. I'm talking about that crowd that wants to tear down everything you believe. They want to destroy this nation. But how do you do it? You do it by taking its foundation apart. And what is the foundation of this country? Our faith in the Lord God Almighty. That's the foundation of America, dear friend. Not in human ability. No, 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 no. The Almighty. So I love Him because He's faithful. I love Him because He supplies every need for my soul. Psalm 42 verse 2 says this, My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Who said that, preacher? 
Somebody tell me who said that. David, the psalmist of Israel, the one who played the harp, the one who sat in the fields at night before the sheep, the one who comforted the sheep, he protected the sheep. He was the one that went to the valley of Elah and stood before Goliath and said, You come to me with a spear and a sword and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Well, let me tell you something this morning. You can come before the church and you can move along as Laodicea does with intellect. You can move along with riches. You can move along by drawing, drawing a crowd and appealing to their flesh. But I come to you this morning in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. My power is not my power. It is the power of the Holy Ghost of God. And it is this word. I will preach it till I drop dead. Hey, Amen. you got to get it settled. we got people today that are scared to death. They're afraid of their shadow. Folks, if I die, I die, but I believe in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I believe in Him. <laughs> I believe in Him. I know Him. When I talk about coming from a dunghill, I'm not kidding you. That's where I came from. So I love Him because He is thoughts for me. Psalm 139 verse 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. Oh, how great is the sum of them. What do you mean by that? If God be for us, who can be against us? You can't cross that divine line. You can't breach that blood covenant. You can't do a thing to get around Calvary. I, I rest in the shadow of that cross. I'm protected by that blood. I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost of God. And you can't touch a hair on my head. Not many of them left. But you can't touch one of them without the permission of Almighty God. You believe that? Do you really believe that? These are the things that I know. There's a lot of things I don't know. And you know the saying today is you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> Think into that. But here are the things that I do know. It said, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. I know the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you know Him. And I believe there are many of you in this house today that know Him personally. No question. I'm not Elijah crawled up in some hole somewhere. He has, he has reserved to Himself thousands that have not bowed their knee to Baal nor kissed His image. I know that. No question about that. And they're not all Baptists either. <laughs> Amen. They love our Lord Jesus Christ to the death. No doubt about it. These are the things that I know. I know salvation is what you need if you don't know the Lord. He'll pull you up. You can't pull yourself up. Man's natural ability, man's natural inclination, not ability, but inclination, is to take hold of his bootstraps and pull himself up so he can brag about what he's done with his life. But I want to tell you something right now. You'll never pull yourself out of condemnation. And you'll never pull yourself out of the curse. You'll never pull yourself up to the presence of God. Who can ascend into heaven, the Bible said? Who can sit at the right hand of God? Who is able to do that? Just one. The Lord Jesus Christ. He hath ascended. Have you noticed what it says in Acts 1? When they gather together and the last words the Lord Jesus Christ spoke. And then the scripture said, He ascended he ascended. Elijah didn't ascend. God sent a chariot for him. Enoch didn't ascend. God just changed him and took him out of here. But the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the curse of the earth. He rose through the atmosphere where the powers and, and, the, and, and all of the, the, the wickedness that covers this earth. Uh, he rose above it into the starry heavens, into the third heaven, into the very presence of God himself. And he approached to the throne of God. And he that has sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he walked in to that holy of holies, the Lord God said, sit down at my right hand, O oh God. <laughs> Woo. He never called an angel God. He never called a seraphim God. But he did his son. This is that one that I have great love for today. Holy Ghost. Now this pole soul over here just losing it. I mean, all this yelling, screaming in church. Good night. We got, we got, we got, we got a sophisticated church here at Temple. <laughs> Our liturgy is, 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 you know, is high and, and holy. No, I want more of that. 
I want more of somebody has got a soul. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of organized religion. That's Laodicea. You're right smack in the middle of it. I want somebody who really loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Not afraid to tell you. Amen. 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 Thank God I know about the forgiveness of sins. Now, some of you may never sin since you got saved, but I've had a, big, I've had a problem with it. I've had my problems. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you something. If I take care of my sins, I don't have time to mess with yours. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry. I can't help you with your sins, but I can tell you about the one that can. I got enough of my own to worry about. And I come to him in grace and I come to him and I beat my chest and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And I mean it. It's not an act. It's not for effect. It rises from the soul from deep inside. Are you beginning to feel that way? Is something, is something getting a hold of your stone cold heart? How can I get this over to you? Is something, is something starting to move within you? And you're starting to look about you and say, what a wasted life I've lived. And I put my trust in this. And, I, and, I, and all this doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Where's God? Where's the living God? If you want to know, you'll find Him. If you want to know the truth, you'll get it. That's what He's made us. Fellowship with the saints. That's what we're having in here today. Fellowship with the saints. Pray for John MacArthur. In California, he's on the front lines. He's locked horns with Caesar out there in California. I know I brought him up, but I bring him up again. Pray for him. Pray for John MacArthur. You don't have to believe, you don't have to agree with everything the brother said. But in my mind, he's a brother. He loves the Lord. Pray for him. He's fighting the good fight of faith. And then pray for Liberty University. I'm sure all of you probably know by now what went on at Liberty. I hope you're not reveling in it. I hope you're not hiding behind it. I hope you didn't get any sordid pleasure out of that. I hope you'll pray for them. That God will give them a president at Liberty University. That he'll use for the glory of God. Because they got a lot of good people over there in that place. You may not agree with everything they say. My, do my goodness, friend. Are you looking for a place where you agree with everything somebody says? Why don't you just, why don't you just create, a, create a robot and put your mind in that robot and you can talk to that robot all day long and everything you say it'll say and there'll never be any disagreement. Amen. But if you talk to a human being, you're going to find that somewhere along the line you don't agree. Pray for Liberty University. I remember the days of Jerry Falwell when he started that school. I remember how that he sold bricks a long time ago. He was selling bricks. They were building some building. I don't remember what it was, but they were selling bricks. And you can't forget what it was, $30, $100 or something back then. It was over 30 years ago. He said, if you get one of these bricks, we'll put it in the wall and we'll engrave on that brick who, you, who you're in memory of or who you're dedicating it to. And so he raised a lot of money, built the school. And thank God for all that, see? But look at this, it comes along. So this is a measure of your spirituality. Yes, it is. These people need prayer. Pray for that president and his wife. Of course, he's resigned, but pray for him. Friend, they need prayer. And that God Almighty will come to them and help them. And then I know the hand of God. <laughs> the hand of God. I went to bed last night fully convinced I knew what I was going to be preaching when I got up this morning. Hallelujah. Slept like a baby till 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And two o'clock in the morning, I rolled over and I, just, I was just a no peace in my soul. I mean, all shrimp, all drawn up. And I knew something was wrong. And the first thing I said was, well, it's the devil. It's Satan. He's attacking me. He doesn't want me to get any rest. He knows what I'm about to preach this morning and he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it a bit. So after I got through dealing with the devil, it didn't leave. So I got up, went to the computer, sat down, turned the computer on, two o'clock in the morning. Sat there in front of that computer. Tried to calm down, do a few things. I went back to bed, and just like I'm talking to you right now, the Lord said, Now, son, this is what I want you to preach. Uh, not that. I've got something else for you. I said, All right. Turn my head over. I said, Lord, I've got to have a little sleep here now. <laughs> got to have a little rest. <laughs> he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. <laughs> God doesn't have to sleep, but I do. Rolled over and went back to sleep. 
Thank God for sleep. Now, some of you folks, you don't know what that means. Yeah. Your head hits the bed, buddy, and I mean you're gone. You don't move for the next seven or eight hours. But I'm not like that. I'm up and I'm down and I'm up and I'm down. And as you get older, a lot of you will be just like that, up and down, up and down, up and down. So when this morning I sat down and God began to fill up my heart and fill up my soul. This is what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. And you're getting what he gave me. <laughs> Praise be unto God. Amen. How many of you preachers have been butting your head against the wall trying to figure out what God wants you to preach? You knew you were supposed to preach something, but you didn't know what it was. Yeah. All preachers, all preachers, raise your hand. Amen. <laughs> what does 1 Corinthians say about God? It says this. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. See that? God suffers long. How long have you been running from God? Amen. Listen to George Whitfield. He said, if one evil thought, if one evil word, if one evil action deserves eternal damnation, how many hells, my friends, do every one of us deserve whose whole lives have been one continued rebellion against God? And when Whitfield died, he died in 1770. That makes him a contemporary of George Washington. That makes him a contemporary of the founding fathers of this nation. Whitfield loved the Lord. He loved him greatly. In other words, 1 Corinthians, when it talks about the definition of love, is literally defining God's character. Love is kind. If you want to get on the YouTube, and I get on there, and, and I, I've, I've, I've got a, uh, if you've ever looked at a profile, see this nose right here? That's a ski slope, see? Now, my poor old daughter back there inherited one just like mine. She won't like that, but a ski slope. What's that mean? That means that I get this nose, and I go after something. And on the Internet, they've got archived video of World War II. I don't know what the fascination with me is with World War II, but they've got archived video. It's amazing when you see the German soldiers that have been taken POW, and you see the American soldiers, you know, they're guarding them. And there seems to be a, a repertoire between the two of them. The German soldiers seem to be free, smiling, as if it's finally over. You know, it's, 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 and, the, and the American soldiers are the same way. In other words, to look at these soldiers that were just a few days before uh, uh, lethal enemies, and now they're getting along with each other. Do you know why? Let me tell you, let me give you just a little bit of wisdom that I've learned in my few years here. German people don't declare war on you. The Chinese people are not declaring war on you. The Japanese people are not declaring war on you. And the American people have not declared war on the Germans or on the Chinese or the Japanese. It's these guys that run the country. Some of them, they're warmongers. It, sometimes, you know, a little bit of talk at a table may take care of a whole lot of souls. Yeah. I mean, that's a pet peeve with me. I'm not a warmonger. If there's any way in the world to get around it, we don't need to go to war. Yeah. All right? Kindness. There's a photograph on there, a video on there, of German nurses. German nurses. It's an amazing thing. I've never seen a German nurse. And they're treating American soldiers. There's another video on there of a dying German soldier. He's dying. And an American soldier giving him a drink of water. Showing him kindness. Yeah. That's kindness, folks. You know the story about the uh, man on his way to Jericho? You know, the good Samaritan? That's kind. God's kind. God's kind to us. He's good to us. He, he bears up our wounds. He pours in the oil. He's gracious to us. That's God! Have you ever felt His kindness? Oh, He's a good God. He's kind. He envieth not. God wishes the best for you. He vaunteth not Himself. God does not force Himself on anyone. He won't make you believe anything. God will not force Himself on you. But He will make Himself graciously available if you simply believe. And not puffed up. God does not boast. Someone who is sovereign, absolute, almighty being like that, he didn't have to say a word. He could stop all creation in a moment of time. 
The cross says everything. John 15 verse 13 said, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Cross is a horrible thing. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. It's horrible. Crucifixion. You know, there's a lot of ways to die. Cardiac arrest is one of the best ways in the world to die. Heart just stops beating. You drop to the ground. No pain. You're gone. That's cardiac arrest. I know what I'm talking about. I've had it happen to me three or four times. But there's a lot of ways to die. And crucifixion's one of the worst. What does that mean, preacher? It means that I'm up here because I love you. He loves us. Do you love him? Do you really love him? Do you really love him? The Bible said perfect love casteth out fear. Remember the fear? That word perfect is the Greek word telos. And you know what it means? It means matured, grown, complete. After years of knowing the Lord, your love should be greater, purer, more complete than it was when you got saved. If you know him, if you really know him, then it casteth out all fear and you desire to be with him. Listen to what Whitfield said. Last words. Lord Jesus, I'm weary in thy work, but not of it. If I have not yet finished my course, let me go and speak for thee once more in the field. Seal thy truth and come home to die. Brother Whitfield, let that be mine. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your holy word. I'll meet George Whitfield one day. I'll meet John Wesley one day. We'll meet them. We'll meet the Apostle Paul. We'll meet Peter, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thaddeus. We'll meet them. Matthew, Levi. We'll meet them. And we'll meet Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. We'll meet David, Samuel, Solomon. One day we'll meet them. The Lord, one day we'll see thee. In Jesus' name. You had your bowed this morning, you know, nobody's looking. You preach a message like I preach today. The whole purpose in this message is to show you what God feels about you. What do you feel about Him? How do you do it? I read a thing this morning by a smart man. He said this. He said, the word for love there in 1 Corinthians 13 is agape. Well, we all know that. We know there's about four or five words for agape in Greek. Phileo, eros, and so forth. But this is agape. It's love of God. The love of God is the kind of love that chooses to love. God doesn't love you because you're filthy. He doesn't love you because you're rebellious. Well, why does he love me, preacher? He loves you because he loves you. That's why. In plain of words, if we are ever going to have a relationship with each other in the house of God and have the Christian fellowship we're supposed to have, we're going to choose to love each other even in spite of our imperfections and our problems and our shortcomings and our failures. Good night, folks. If you're looking for a bunch of perfect people to get together and fellowship with, keep hunting because you're not going to find them. But if you want to come together in a house where you love each other, all right, real love, the love of the Father, then you'll find fellowship. Once you find fellowship, you'll find a sweet thing because you'll find friendship and people that love you and people that will pray with you. And then you'll find people that will bear your burdens. And then they fulfill the law of Christ. Why don't you ask God to give you that grace this morning, the grace of that love. Ask him to do that for you. Did you know the First Corinthians chapter number 12, you go through all of the gifts of the Spirit. But he says... In 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, the next chapter, the greatest of these, and these is a continuation of chapter 12. He said, the greatest of these is love. And here's what he says about it. He says, it never faileth. You want to get your marriage healed? Get on your face before God. Get on your knees. Cry out to God and say, Lord, fill me with the love of God. And I'll look at my husband or my wife and I'll cast my love upon them. And I know they do the same thing our marriage is healed and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it but you come down here and ask God to give you that